Phelps, welcome to Vice. This is your new partner, Roy Earl. Take a seat. A special request was made to transfer you to add Vice. We need a man with your kind of starch on this desk, son. We have two dead Negroes found in an apartment this morning on Yucca Street. Number 6358, apartment 5. We got better things to be doing than wasting our time on two dead junkies. Did I ask your opinion, detective? Two men dead on U.S. Army issue morphine. That makes it an advice case. Beat it! Yes, sir. You and the lieutenant have some history? You could say that. We used to be partners. So, you're working with the big boys now, Cole? I guess so, Roy. I thought homicide was the primo assignment. That may be the case. I asked for you personally, Phelps. I had to pull a few strings to get you over to advice. How does it feel? The lieutenant seems to think I'm doing okay. Okay? <laughs> Don't get humble on me, Phelps. You're doing great. You're the department pinup boy. War hero and crime fighter. What a combination. I can assure you I'm no war hero detective. Let's rouse some hop heads. I understand you, but thousands wouldn't. Wrinkled was not one of the things I wanted to be when I grew up. <laughs> Nice car, Roy. Is it department issue? No, this is my sled. You can't be seen slumming it in a gnash if you're in vice cold. Meanwhile, we got needle freaks kissing a goodbye all over Central Avenue. Any of the vicinity officer needs assistance. 1825 North Highland Avenue, 1825 North Highland Avenue. Unit to handle code 2 identify. a prize shithole for our first date. Officer, please, tell me what's going on. It's up the stairs, detectives. Around the corner, last door on the left. Carruthers. Phelps? I've been reassigned to advice. What have we got? Two stiffs, overdosed. Been dead a couple of days. Government issue morphine. We use the same surrettes in Okinawa. Fucking Negro junkies can't take supply this pure. You know these guys? I know of them. The younger one's a two-bit horn player by the name of Cornell Tyree. The other one works in distribution. Started using a little too much of his own product, and Jack D took exception. He wasn't born that ugly. His name's Lamont. Tyrone Lamont. So who's supplying the drugs? That's easy. Whoever knocked off the wharves in San Pedro. Jack Dragna, Mickey Cohen. Dope's been all upside down ever since Jimmy Utley started the long walk at Quentin. You talk about it like it's a system. It was a system. But those days are long gone. We are supposed to uphold the law. Yeah, and we do. But we can't change people. The truth is, everyone wants the license to get a little dirty now and then. Our job is to keep it manageable. That's how you see it? See it any other way, and you better forget about being a vice cop. Can we get on with this today, preferably? A skeleton goes into a bar and orders a beer and a mop. Took his jolt and drifted off. I suppose his friend wasn't in any condition to notice that he had stopped breathing. One cigarette is enough to knock you out for combat trauma. Two of them will stop your heart. These clowns lived on popcorn? Must have been messy eaters. It's all over the floor.
Find anything interesting? They say only the good die young. I hope it was true in your case. Who is JJ? And why do these two care about his taste in music? Street life, I have no idea how dangerous this stuff is. No cooking, what preparation? Must have been the easiest fix these two ever had. from the Caesar. shift a lot of popcorn. Let's shake them down. Help you? Detectives Phelps and Durrell, LAPD. We're inquiring into the deaths... Hand over the popcorn, numbskull, before we kick the door in. Get that son of a bitch.
you gotta help me out. What the hell going on here? Morgan! Not you? You picked the wrong cop, you fucking animal. What's your name? Morgan. Half an answer is no answer to me, asshole. Fleetwood Morgan. Keep an eye on him, Roy, while I take a look around. Keep very still, Fleetwood. Don't give me an excuse to shoot you. Filling, but I'm sure it's satisfying. These number slips might affect your tone, Fleetwood. Stamped on the reverse by the issuer. Maybe Morgan can give us something on this Jones character. About time we heard what Fleetwood here has to say, Cole. We're inquiring about the deaths of two men in an apartment across the street, Fleetwood. We want answers. Of course. I'll do my best, mister. You sold the drugs to Cornell Tyree and Tyrone Lamont. Oh, I sell... I, I sell fried steaks and, 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 and black-eyed peas. You're lying, Fleetwood. We know that you supplied them. I don't know nothing about no drugs. All I do is my ten hair flipping burgers. Can you prove any different? Flipping burgers and strapping jolts of morphine to the bottom of popcorn cups, Fleetwood. Now, I want the truth. Who supplies the drugs? Cat by the name of Armstrong Edwards. All right, he brings the stuff around about once a day. I know Armstrong. He's a two-bound, strictly small time. Who's he working for, Fleetwood? Jermaine Jones. We have you for the hop and resisting arrest. Tell us about the numbers if you want our help. Look, the numbers are the white man's tax on poor folk. All right, now, now what else you want to know? We have an address on the slips. We're going to go down there now and rat you out, Fleetwood. Tell whoever it is that you rolled over and gave them up. No, 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 no. Look, I've been cooperative, okay? Now you gotta help me some. Fleetwood, I'm gonna speak personally to the judge on your behalf. A name, Fleetwood. Look, he's, he's a real slick dude. Wears a hat and swings a cane. Goes by the name of Merlin, all right? I ain't got a last name. See you at the station, Fleetwood. Hey, you're gonna help me, right? Of course, kid. You helped us out. We always like to repay a favor. Can you see that Fleetwood gets a nice cell, Wallace? One with a window and a nice fresh pillow. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? 
I need an address on the Jermaine Jones Musical Booking Agency. Just a moment, detective. Jermaine Jones. The office is listed as 5528 Santa Monica Boulevard. Thanks. Isn't he the cop you're talking about on the radio? Look at this place. I'm guessing not much talent comes out of this talent agency. Here we are, Jermaine Jones, 238. Jermaine Jones, don't bother getting up. Your flunky Fleetwood Morgan just snitched you out. I wasn't planning to. Now, you think you could tell me who the hell you are? LAPD. We'd like to take a look around. The hell you will, motherfucker. You carrying a warrant? No, do we need one? Search the place, Cole. What do you think you're gonna find, policeman? Scott Phantom, fine radio, shortwave, AM and FM. My father has a Scott. You ain't allowed to do this. I got rights. This thing is sounding a little muffled, Jermaine. Brennan! Wilt! Get over here! Take these assholes apart. You heard the boss. Is this the best you got? These mugs are dope to the eyeballs. Oh, Clean them up quick, boys. I ain't got time for this. Come on, come on! Beat these sons of bitches down! This isn't gonna end well for you, friend. Say good night, sweetheart. Cole! Sit tight, asshole. Pretend you're at the parlor getting your nails done. Cole, you better search through that stuff in the radio before you brace our friend here. How many starving musicians pay with perfect, clean 50s? Too much for felony possession. I'm thinking intent to supply. Your friend Fleetwood was also a betting man, Jermaine. This must be how those two bums standing guard take their wages. Mont and Tyree are dead. At a stretch, the DA could have you on felony murder for supplying stolen government... Tyrone and Cornell are dead. They're on a slab downtown with the ME examining their last meal. Popcorn washed down with morphine. And you offering me a deal? I have a pet judge who hates blacks. He'll give you 50 years for your two buddies. 
Another 30 for stealing from Uncle Sam. You'll be out by the time you're 110. Imagine the changes you'll see. I get the message. How much is this going to cost me? Who supplies the morphine? I don't know nothing about that. So we make you for all of it. You're the fall guy from Mickey Cohen. In case you haven't noticed, I'm a colored man. Do you see any Jew boys running around here? I collect my cut. Lenny LeFink controls the action. Lenny who? Lenny Finkelstein, Mickey's dipshit brother-in-law. What is the link between the morphine and the numbers slips? There is no link. You're wasting your time here. You're lying to me, Jones. Tell me about Merlin. Who? I don't know anyone named Merlin. Fleetwood Morgan will testify that you and Merlin are expanding out of illegal gambling and into drugs. Okay. So I buy from a cat goes by the name of Merlinati. Merlin runs the lottery for the Jew boy. The Fink has a new line in drugs. You squeal me out, I deny ever telling you. Tell us about Adi. Adi's a gambler. Fronts points on football games, fights, the horses, numbers. Chicken crossing the road. Motherfucker will take the odds on anything. Ramez removals. They must have taken special care delivering this for you. What's the score with Ramez removals? I brought a radio from there. That's all. So when we visit Ramez removals and tell them that we want a special bookcase or wardrobe to hide our dope in, they're going to be copacetic. And when we tell them their good friend Jermaine sent us and said they could do a nice deal for the LAPD. I could use an act like you two. Those fucks Abbott and Costello are on the slide. Hollywood could use another couple of deeply unfunny white bread humps like you. Very good, Jermaine. You have character. Now cough it up. Ramez is a good friend of Lenny the Fink. You getting the picture? Take them all in. We have a deal, right? We're after the morphine. I'll speak to the DA on your behalf. You have my word. Cole Phelps, batch 1247. How can I help, detective? I need an address for Ramez removals. That's Ramez, R-A-M-E-Z. Just checking. Ramez removals, corner Sunset and Wilton. Owned by a Jose Victor Ramez. Thanks for your help. Detectives Phelps and Earl, LAPD. The name's Marilyn Odie. I run a strictly legitimate bookmaker's detective. So that's not an illegal wire service that your colleagues are running? And the number slips that I've been picking up all morning with this address on them have nothing to do with you? 
I pay my kick to the Watts, and they pay their cut to the LAPD. You can't go shaking me down. You're a loudmouth motherfucker, aren't you? Anyone ever tell you the criminals are supposed to keep their mouths shut? Stay where you are while we look around. This quantity, we're looking at a high-level trafficking charge. Thanks for the paper trail, Merlin. I think Ramez's place is our next stop. Oh, that's quite a win for a dime, Merlin. You better God start talking. damn it. Get after him, Phelps. Give it up, Adi. or I will shoot. There he is, officer. Hurry, you can still catch him! What are you trying to do, Merlin? Right, relax, motherfucker, you got me. Nice wand, Merlin. Too bad you couldn't pull off your vanishing act. Make your joke, smart guy, but don't damage that. That there's a valuable antique. You don't say. Maybe you ought to have a look at this, Cole. Adi has Jose Ramez in his pocket. Ramez must have forgotten his lucky numbers. Would you like to calculate the odds on you going to prison for a very long time, Merlin? I'm not going nowhere. I paid my contributions, and I'm not getting hustled by you. We're only interested in morphine. Army surplus morphine. What do you have to say about that? I heard about that. Big robbery on the ship. Ain't my line of work. I prefer something with a sporting outcome. You distribute for Lenny Phillips, Steve. You're a patsy for those gangsters. I don't know what you're talking about. I distribute for the LAPD, motherfucker. Jermaine Jones gave you up as his supplier. He says that you're Lenny's sissy, and that you'll do whatever Lenny tells you. Me? That nigga's a dead man. I moved the dope Jose brings me. Jose Ramirez, I ran a clean numbers racket until those two motherfuckers went into the dope business. Ramez seems to owe you a lot of money. We all owe somebody. 
though it has nothing to do with the proceeds of the morphine shipment? It's a gambling debt. The heaps took over the wise service and screwed me. Now I just do what I'm told. Run numbers and ship dope. Jose's no different. He just thinks he's a big man that can run up tabs. You're not the guy we want, Merlin. We're taking you in. Maybe some time in a cell will help you remember something worthwhile. Fuck you, and fuck you. You'll never put a charge on me. Take this bum in. Take the long way around. And don't be gentle with him. You got that? Yes, sir. LAPD. We're here to see Jose Ramez. What's it about? Routine inquiries, sir. Can you tell us where we can find him? You missed him. He was in the delivery truck, just went out. God damn it. 11K calling KGPL. Go ahead, 11K. 11K requesting assistance in pursuit of narcotic suspects aboard a GM delivery truck. Commercial license, David Charles, 457. Roger, 11K. Get in close and steer him off the tar. What does this lunatic think he's doing? We're not playing around here. Take this clown off the road. Whoa, watch it. Here comes the cavalry. I can't take the shot from here, Cole. Hit him. Clear this asshole off the road. Let's see how fast he runs on bare rims. Hit him, Cole. Spit him out. He's going left onto Hollywood. Get alongside him and take him out. It's no good. We need to get closer. That's it, Paul. You did it. It's truck history. Pull him out of there. Put your hands in the air. Jose Ramez, you're being arrested on suspicion of supplying illegal drugs, resisting arrest, and for malicious damage to LAPD property. Hey, hold your horses. I supply furniture, not drugs. And that thing back there, that was an accident. Some furniture came loose. That's all. Save it for the DA, Chico. Keep an eye on him. We're going to take a look around inside. Where's he been delivering? And who's been delivering here? Any repeat business in the ledger, Cole? Why is Ramez buying so much ice? you think anywhere else to meet, kid? We like to choose our ground. What is that supposed to mean? Huh? It's something Wellington said at Waterloo. The guys who win normally choose where to fight. Are we gonna fight, kid? The two of you versus my boys here? I love the fight game. I went a few rounds myself. You and your friend, uh, 
You look tough, but uh, I don't like your chances. Nah. We don't have to fight, Mr. Cohen. We have you an infilate. What the fuck is that? Some kind of stake? It means my men are in cover, but that they can still shoot you. If those were my orders, you would all be dead now. Are you kidding me? This is a $200 coat. You got some balls. Kelso. I hope you didn't scratch the paint of my new Lincoln. Mm -mm. These guys are getting out of the dope business, Mr. Cohen. You'll have no more problems from them. The morphine is going to disappear back into the sea. Hang on. You're getting hasty. There's a lot of dough on offer here. Thanks for the offer, Mr. Cohen, but we are going to have to politely decline. After today, the morphine is no more. This isn't the way we normally do business. I'm aware of that, Mr. Cohen. Call me Mickey. Are you aware of the risk, huh? I'm giving it to you straight, Mr. Cohen. There will be no more morphine. We made a mistake and would like to back out gracefully. If you come after us, we will be forced to come after you. You've been polite up till now. So don't stop making threats. I don't make threats, Mr. Cohen. I'd like to thank you for your time. Is that guy your idea, muscle kid? <laughs> There's something you should know about Jack, Mr. Cohen. He kills six Japs hand to hand with just a bayonet and a K-bar knife. His outfit, the six Marines, killed over 100,000 Japs in three months in Okinawa, and he was in the thick of it. Those Japs are little guys, right? Yes, Mr. Cohen. About your size. What's with the puddle? Where's that trail of water coming from, Cole? There must be a way through the back. This is useless. I can't see a damn thing. You need to get up onto the floor above. Down here, there's a cold room in the back.
I think we know where the water's coming from. You're gonna wanna see this. There's something frozen inside. PD, leave it right there. Everyone out of the vehicle and put your hands up. There's something in the ice. He's making a run for it. Let him have it. Show me your face, motherfucker. Give me some goddamn cover. Hollywood Station. Have the ME and tech services go over this place. Where will you be? Hunting polar bear. The factory is closed. It's been for years. How much call for ice anymore with all those newfangled refrigerators? Save it for someone who wants to hear it. How many janitors carry a gat? One way of announcing we're here. Give it up, Finkelstein. Your brother-in-law will get you a good lawyer. My brother-in-law hates my guts. Come and get me if you want some gay life with that suit of yours. Eyes open. He's around here somewhere. Weapons on the ground, now. Get behind something, Phelps! Give me some goddamn cover! How long do you think you can hold out? I'm wide open here! They're all dead, Finkelstein. Leave the weapon and put your hands up now. Put my hands up? Sure. Then what? Cop the peddling the dope? Cut a deal? Ship me off to the queue? As soon as I get locked up, some old friend puts a, an ice pick above my ear? No thanks. Only one other way out, shit heel. So come <laughs> Let's have a look around. 
now that we finally got some peace and quiet. I think I've had enough ice for one day. Until the scotch I pour myself as soon as we get out of here. This stuff has got to be worth at least a hundred grand. So Finkelstein robbed the ship? My guess is Lenny took it off their hands. This is big. This is going to make the papers, Phelps. As senior investigator, I'll do the talking. Well, well. Who would have thought that Roy Earl's hand-picked new partner would have turned out to be such a great case man? This is a good result, Phelps. As far as we can tell, Lenny the Fink was moving the morphine across the city and as far north as Frisco. This makes the feds very happy, and it makes Mickey Cohen look bad. I won't lie to you, kid. I like the headlines. I like them a lot. You keep this squad in the papers, and we'll get along just fine. You know a Freddie Calhoun? Sure, I know. Freddie needs money to get out of town. Says he's prepared to blow the whistle on a primo reefer distribution ring. Says he Has can... Has he said how much it's going to cost? 50 bucks. And the department will front me the 50? You can put in an expense claim. He's over at Mike Lyman's on Hollywood Boulevard. See what you can find out. There's a little sneak. That's him in the back, Cole. She wants a five star. God damn it. I just don't know. Freddy, you're looking good. You're gonna help me, right? That's what I'm here for. You got the money? The 20? Sure, yeah. right here. 20? I said. You want the money or the alternative? Tell us about the reefer, Freddy. Another good Samaritan. Answer the question. Grass comes from Tijuana. They bring in 50 pounds a week. 50 pounds? Are you hallucinating, Freddy? Get stashed at a house at 1452 North Las Palmas. Names, Freddy. The guy at the house is a spick that goes by the name Juan Garcia Cruz. Be careful. He likes guns. That's why I get my money. Do me a favor, Freddy. Spend the money on a bus ticket. You can't last forever on a snitch jacket. Let's go visit this cruise character. 50 pounds of dope. Crazy. You believe his story? Sure. A hophead like Freddy would raffle his sister for his next score.
you politely to move on. Next time I won't be so nice. You guys don't have to leave a mess. What happened? Dope peddler, Juan Cruz. You open fire and, well, the rest of the story tells itself. A silver dollar. Oh, they took these things out of circulation. Juan Garcia Cruz. This is his address, but this place looks like a front. Is this a drug or a village in Borneo? Doesn't appear to be in Spanish. Junkies feeding on popcorn and grasshoppers living on soup. so well stocked with soup. This is going to help us. Now we're getting somewhere. Soup? Who in the hell keeps a secret stash of soup? You hungry or something, Phelps? I'd say that's pretty good value for 12 cents. Factory sealed. Someone at the cannery has a lot of explaining to do.
With Juan dead, we need a new suspect, Cole. Is there a pattern to the deliveries? This guy, EJ, seems to be bringing in most of the serious weight. The dates and times seem pretty regular. We should notify the border crossing. Those fuckers are probably in on it. Let's wait and see how this plays out. Right. Let's see if we can find out who's been over-seasoning the soup in this place. LAPD. Who owns this factory, ma'am? Mr. Parnell. Uh, Howard Parnell. I'll let him know you're here. Please, take a seat. If you don't mind, we'll come with you. If you must. You just wanted to follow her, didn't you? You sly dog. I must apologize for my partner's roving eye. He hates saying goodbye, but he loves watching them leave. Give it a rest, Roy. If you could show these men in to see Mr. Parnell, Doris. They're from the LAPD. Follow me, gentlemen. What is going on? LAPD, sit tight, fatso. You could be in very serious trouble. There's no reason to be rude. Take a seat, gentlemen. I'm sure we can sort this all out. Maybe you can explain why we found $5 bags of marijuana in sealed Parnell soup cans. That's an outrageous allegation. How do you explain it, chubby? We found at least 30 cans, all sealed up tight with your label on them. Can I get a list of your employees? Of course. We have nothing to hide. Doris, can you bring me in the current employee listing? Here it is, Mr. Parnell. On the desk, please. Any name on that list that rings a bell? This is familiar. 1452 North Los Palmas, a Jorge Garcia Cruz. The factory sealed cans we found suggest a very professional operation, Mr. Parnell. We're looking for an inside man. I know nothing about this. I want this stopped as much as you do. Tell me what I want to know, Parnell, or I will have half the LAPD down here tearing this place apart. You're hiding something. Am I right in thinking you would not want to pursue misdemeanors outside your drug case? Depending on what you call a misdemeanor, we might be prepared to turn a blind eye. The truth is I employ a lot of illegals. No one wants to do menial work anymore. Most of my factory staff are wetbacks. The local blacks and Chicanos all want jobs in aircraft factories. Presumably because the pay is a lot better. How are your sales, Mr. Parnell? Just fine and dandy, son. We're entering a new era of prosperity. I hope you're both big soup eaters. Mr. Parnell, do you know what kind of trouble you're in? Come clean with us. Okay, so things are a little flat. We're deciding whether to lower production. It's taken a while to adjust to not having any military contracts. You know, we sold Uncle Sam five million cans of minestrone. Ever heard of Juan Garcia Cruz? Not that I know of. He has a brother employed here. You know him? We employ large numbers of Mexicans. I, I'm not familiar with them all. That's funny, Parnell. He has the same address as his brother Juan, who we shot dead less than an hour ago. You better give me something. Look, I'm not involved in this. I'm getting enough grief from Washington. There's an investigation going on into profiteering, like a guy shouldn't be able to turn a buck while the war is on. I'm sure thousands of dead Marines sleep soundly knowing that you did okay. 
<laughs> Tell us about Jorge Garcia Cruz. Jorge? I had no idea of his last name. His team does daily maintenance on the conveyor belts and cookers. So he's here now? No, maintenance is at night. Uh, night shift finishes around midnight. He would usually come in around 9 p.m. and have everything ready for the morning shift at 6. We'd like to take a look around the factory floor, Mr. Parnell. I hope we won't have to shut down the line. No, nothing like that. Thank you. I'm grateful for that. I'll show you around myself. I hate seeing how things are made. This is going to be like that time I went to the slaughterhouse and couldn't eat steak for a week. This is where the produce comes in. We peel and sort all of the vegetables and add them to the line in regular quantities. Fascinating. Why don't you keep quiet? You might learn something. Oh, good God. This really is turning into some nightmare school trip flashback. This is the hopper, which boils and purees the vegetables. The other hopper is for the pasta. This way, please. You're loving this, aren't you, Phelps? The soup is ladled automatically into cans. Next stage is labeling. I'd like to see the packing and dispatch area, if you don't mind. Sure. It's over here. Follow me. This is one of our dispatchers. Sergio, right? Yes, sir. These men are from the LAPD. Sergio here records our outgoing deliveries. They all go in the book. Just there on the desk. We're looking for repeat business in large amounts, Cole. What's going on, Parnell? There's enough soup going to this place every day to feed a company of Marines. What are you talking about? Can I have a look at that coin? Sure, why not? Silver dollar, right? Yeah, that's right. The markings on it say it's been taken out of circulation. Maybe. I'm not trying to buy anything with it. I like it. It brings me luck. Do you have access to the canning area? I do. But I keep to my station. Loading and unloading. Don't care much for soup. Sergio, if you don't give me something, I'm gonna go to Immigration Services and have you deported. I get a shipment once every two weeks. Ernesto does the driving. I don't know his full name. It's delivered here at night, or he gets it canned up. From here, it gets sent all over the country. What do you know about the 20th century market? Nada. I get the orders from upstairs. I send the goods where I'm told. And you don't know Juan Garcia Cruz? No. Not me. You're a liar, Sergio. You're in it, and I'm gonna break you for it. You're loco, Placa. I got nothing to do with Juan Garcia.
We found a matching silver dollar on Juan Garcia. What are the odds of that, Sergio? Juan and Jorge are in brothers. They're cousins. They work for some evil garbacho. The guy is an aberration. He gives out the silver dollars. Jorge gives me a list of deliveries every morning. 20th century is always on. You keep your mouth shut for today, and I don't take you in. Do we have a deal? Do I have a choice? Is that a serious question? That's it for now, Sergio. If we need to speak to you again, we'll put in a call to Mr. Parnell. If you have to, I guess. We will be in touch, Mr. Parnell. It is imperative that things appear as normal here. Keep an eye on Sergio in case he gets tempted to blow the whistle. Thanks. I'll do that. You're going to overlook my little immigration problem, aren't you? Cheer up, fatso. We're going to let you go on squeezing these poor saps a little while longer. Well, until some commie union types infiltrate this place. I am glad to be out of that place. I never knew fresh vegetables could smell so bad. Sit tight. Let's take a look at what's going on. Either these customers are serious soup lovers, or I think we found our middleman. Car 11 King to KGPL. Car 11 King, go ahead. I'm requesting assistance in a B wagon at 20th Century Markets, 1558 North Highland. Numerous narcotic suspects. Code 2 only, no sirens. 11K, Roger. Okay. Cavalry should be here any minute. Whatever you're carrying, hand it over. I'd say he's got about half a can left. I guess that makes me a pessimist. You can't take me in. Take you in? Be glad he didn't shoot you. I wouldn't have chased you. If it was up to me, you'd be talking out of a hole in the back of your I head. I want information. Senor, I would like to help you. But I got a family in Mexico I have to provide for. And my compadres are very unreasonable. Your compadres? Turn out your pockets. I need Ray to run down these silver dollars. I need to make a deal. I need guarantees. You have identification? Sanchez Erto, Mexican, Tijuana address. Here's the deal, Erto. You give me information, and I won't give you to immigration. 
Give me EJ, the driver bringing in the shipments, or I'll make you for it. I run this shop. That's all I do. Tell me the goddamn truth. You are in this with the others. I told you I know them. I told you my family's at risk. What makes me part of their gang? You have a silver dollar, Erto, just like Juan. I'm sure Ernesto and the rest have them as well. The silver dollars are his mark. Whose? Give me a name. None of us are allowed to see him. His creatures carry his orders to us. If I gave you his name, I would be buried alongside my wife and children. If you don't give us something, you will rot in jail while your family starves on the street. Ernesto Juarez, tonight at 1 a.m. He's bringing the truck into the soup factory. Please help me, sir. Ernesto can be very cruel. Tell me about the soup cans. The soup is very popular, as you can see. It's a real funny, wise guy. You want to try saying that again with no teeth? I get a delivery at 7.30 every other day from the factory. Jorge organizes everything. We know about Jorge and Juan. Juan is dead. Tell us how you know the Cruz boys. Ernesto put together this thing. He brought in Juan, Juan brought in Jorge. Continue. I was already here. Ernesto knows I'm illegal, so he threatened to report me if I didn't help. And the money is good. The gringos and the gringas, they love the reefer. And I didn't want to have to leave and start again in San Francisco. You're breaking my heart. You're under arrest, Erto. I'll speak to the DA and see if he will agree to not seize your assets or deport you. That's the best I can do. Freddy said they were moving 50 pounds a week. That's a lot of soup cans. I think this is an interstate operation. Moving dope around the country to selected grasshoppers. Local weed gets distributed in the usual way, through Pachuco street punks. Someone must know something about this drug baron character. Here they come. Let them unload the goods first. Now? Let's get them. Move. Move! Let's go! Everyone into position! Okay. LAPD, put your hands where we can see them. Go, Fel. Get in there.
think that's the last of them, Cole. Detectives, found something here you probably want to see. One dollar per dead man. Doesn't seem like much for a human life. If you want an address, we should see what the Federales have on it. found our stash, Cole. Take a look in these boxes. At the very minimum, another 50 pounds. Detectives, I think we got the guy. Does the name Cruz mean something to you? It certainly does. Yet another silver dollar. Phelps, Earl, looks like quite a bloodbath. What was this all about? Drugs and money, what else? Speaking of money, where did that roll go? I picked it up for safekeeping. The department owes me 50. Ray, I have another two coins for you. Great, I've got something to show you. It's all set up on the table over here. There, take a look at these coins you've been collecting. There are letters cut into each coin, along with not legal tender. Those are Morgan silver dollars from the 20s. They were removed from circulation and sent for disposal. A number of smelters around the country had the contract. Look at them together. Can you work out what it says? First coin, M-A-S. The second, A-N-G. The third, K-A-Y. The fourth, M-E-T. The fifth, A-L-S. Mesanke Metals. A metal foundry. Would you like the address? Would I ever. 1034 Vine Street, Hollywood. We'll finish up here. It's already been a long night, Phelps. See if you can talk them into giving themselves up. I hope that big wad of cash doesn't weigh you down. Get your priorities straight, Phelps. We're close to bringing in one of the biggest dope cases of the year, and you're worrying about unsubstantial evidence? Locked. We need another way in.
That'll work. King's over five. God Cover damn. the back door, Rook. Throw out the guns. Sanders. You know this guy? I should have known. Of course I know Roy. Roy and I have had an arrangement for Get many up. years. You're under arrest. Am I? This we have a is. mountain of prima facie evidence, as well as the testimony. You'd be surprised how things have a habit of sorting themselves out. Evidence disappearing. Witnesses that can't be found. Policemen that forget. The impossible becomes probable when you have a client list like mine. Shut your mouth! Turn around and put your hands behind your back. Working vice can be a thankless task, Phelps. But on behalf of the brass and the moms and dads and the concerned citizens, I'd like to commend you and your partner for smashing this dope ring. Reefer is almost as big a threat to the children of this city as communism. What about Sanders, Lieutenant? Leave Sanders to me, Phelps. The chief will be looking after that one personally. He will be brought to trial. Phelps, we are celebrating your success. Don't push your luck. Sanders is no longer your problem. Your platoon is what remains of recon. I'm folding you into the 22nd. You'll be going up that damned hill tonight. We're intelligence gathering, sir. I don't need intelligence, son. I need men who can hold rifles and kill Japs. Tonight, you're a rifle company. We've got cooks, mechanics, and stretcher bearers all going into the line. We aim to break them tonight, Lieutenant. Good to see you, Hank. You too, Cole. How's your war? Not quite what I expected. As long as I live, I will never get over that sound. Hey, who's that medic? He'll be killed going out there. It's Sheldon, the guy from the Asakawa Bridge. That guy's got no fear. <laughs> He didn't make it. I didn't go out there to save him. What are you saying, man? I went out there to put him out of his misery, to ease his pain. Do you have a problem with that? Murder, Corman. That's war, Lieutenant. Smell the stench. Feel the horse breath on your neck. You need help, man. Call for me tonight, Lieutenant. When you're up on that hill. I've been up there three times already. The circles of hell have nothing on Sugarloaf Hill. Get this madman out of my sight! Phelps. I did a little boxing in the Marines. I found it a pretty humbling experience. Fix you a sandwich, buddy? 
one beef and egg salad, 12 cents. Bologna and ham and cheese, 10. It's strictly a mugs game. You'll like this fight, though. A plucky limey's about to take a beating from an up-and-coming Negro. You sound pretty sure about the result. I ought to be. I got 50 bucks on the black kid. Let's get a ringside seat. Son of a bitch Hammond made a run for his dressing room. Let's find out what's going on. God damn you, Albert! You get out here right now! Step back, LAPD. What's going on? That son of a bitch Hammond has jammed the door. And who are you? Carlo Arcaro. I'm his manager. I'm his trainer. Interesting attitude to have towards a victorious athlete. Victorious? We had an arrangement. We had a goddamn arrangement! That limey bastard was paid to take a nap. He reneged. And you were out of pocket? Damn right. Me and a couple hundred other people. Stand aside. He squeezed out the window. I'll put an APB out on him. Why would we do that? He won the fight fair and square. To prevent him from getting clipped. He was paid to flop. There was big money riding on this So are fight. we here because you lost money or because we're investigating a prize fighting racket? Very funny. Look around and see what you can find. Which is Hammond's locker? Over by the pin board, second from the end. There's a phone number we can run by R and I. Plus a bunch of names and odds. You're not the only one who likes a flutter, Roy. You better find that cocksucker and you bring him to me. I feel bad too, Mickey. He guaranteed me he would take the flop. I guarantee that you will be fish food if you don't bring me... Roy, you out of pocket too? Mickey, seems that way. Don't worry about it. My boys are out looking for him. Well, you'd better call them off. This is a police matter now. If anything happens to Hammond, I'll testify that you made threats against him. Who's the Greyhound? He's a frisky one, isn't he? Cole Phelps? Mickey Cohen. I know who he is, Roy. I, uh, met his brother-in-law. I think you had the mixture pretty scared back there. Operator, give me dispatch. Phelps, batch 1247. How can I help, detective? I need an address for the following phone number, AL345. The address for the phone number is the Hotel El Mar, 6294 Leland Way, Hollywood. Thanks for your help. You seem to have a pretty cozy relationship with Cohen and Stampanato. Do I note a hint of reprimand in your tone, detective? Talking to gangsters comes with the turf. You should try out Mickey's place. He's got a haberdasher's up on Sunset. 
See if he can get you out of those old man's clothes that you slink around in. It's a front for his illegal activities. It is that, but he does carry some very sharp suits. If it's okay with you, I'll stick with Brooks Brothers. What do you want? LAPD. We're making inquiries into the whereabouts of an Albert Hammond. No one here by that name. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. This isn't the sort of place where people use their real names. Take a look at the register if you don't believe me. Isn't that the cop who solved the big case and got promoted? Okay, so look for prominent Tommies. That should narrow it down. There are three kinds of people. Those who can count, and those who can't. Winston I Churchill. Swear, this town is going A very patriotic ahead. Englishman is staying in room 207. The old bulldog. Even at a flop house, Adley can't get out from his shadow. He wants a five-star goddamn wedding. I think someone's had a few too many. <laughs> Door's unlocked. Looks like he's had a broad up here. I survived the war for this. Does Albert have somebody special? I didn't see anyone in his corner at the fight. I guess a fighter has plenty of time on his hands between bouts. home. You know, I hope he makes it. That crooked son of a bitch, no chance. Instaheat. Adrian Black's product of choice. Seems like a lifetime ago. Candy has expensive taste. Albert has his work cut out for him. Who's Candy? Candy Edwards, the lady who filled out this coupon. All right, let's go after his girl, see if that gets us any closer. Looks like Albert has been doing some homework. 11 grand would be a nice little nest egg. in the Marines? We all did. Standard training. I can't imagine you ever played dirty. The only prize for taking a fall was a thousand push-ups. The American Century Broadcasting Company salutes our veterans. We need to know which room is Candy's. Can I help you, gentlemen? LAPD, ma'am. We're looking for Candy Edwards. Apartment 7. You take the outside stairs by the parking lot and turn left at the top. You friends of the Italian guy? Italian guy? Yeah. 
Sweezy type? Gave his name as Carlo. I didn't like the look of him, but Candy has some funny friends. Thanks. This Candy broad must be as sweet as she sounds. All these gentlemen callers. Sounds like we're missing all the fun. Get in there, Phelps. You know where he's hiding. Now tell me where he is before I cut you. I told <laughs> Like hitting women. <laughs> this isn't going to end well for you, friend. Out cold, but breathing. Give her a minute and take a look around. Nasty weapon. All the Italians carry them. A real man uses his fists or a gun. Carlo here seems to have the same friends as Hammond. What are the odds on them all being bookmakers? Single ticket, one way. I guess there isn't a lot for Albert in Ohio. Scania sails from New York. Take a seat, Miss Edwards. We have some questions for you to answer. Look, I haven't done anything wrong. Ever? I find that pretty hard to believe. Can you answer some questions now, Miss Edwards? Sure, I've had worse. I'll shake it off. We're trying to track down Albert Hammond. We have reason to believe he might be in danger. Do you know where he is? No, I don't. I'm over Albert. I haven't seen him. You're lying, Candy. You were in his hotel room. He came back after the fight and you weren't there. What happened? You can't prove that I was in the room. How do you think we found you, Candy? You wrote your name and address on a coupon. Look, Albert was supposed to take a fall. We were all supposed to make a little money out of it. But Albert got too goddamn stubborn. Said his pride was all he had left. So I told him, shove it. Let's see his pride keep him warm at night. So you walked out before the fight? Yes, I did. What's the problem? I didn't take anything. Do the names Harry, Mervyn, or Ray mean anything to you? Could be anybody. How the hell would I know? They're bookmakers, aren't they? Tell me the truth. How the hell would I know? Albert wrote his winnings down on a notepad in the hotel room. We found the odds in his locker. Who has the betting slips? That son of a bitch, Albert. Everyone thought he was dumb, including me. But he beat them all. You're leaving town, Miss Edwards? Yes, I'm going straight home. Albert is going home by boat as soon as he collects his winnings. I know you're going to meet him. Albert is going to collect nothing. He'll be lucky if he can get out of town in one piece. How will you fare any better? They already believe you're in on it. Hell, I know you're in on it. You can think what you want, Buster. I'll take my chances. I got a few errands to run, and then I say adios to this dump. Do you want to press charges against Arcaro? Just get him out of here. That's all I want. Get out, Carlo, you hump. And get rid of that pig sticker. You ever pull that thing on me, I'll shoot you like a dog. That bitch knows where Hammond is. She knows where my money's gone. 
My money too, tough guy. I'll handle this. Good luck, Miss Edward. I hope things work out for you. Thank you. It's very kind of you to say so. Bad people are looking to hurt Candy, and yet she's not heading straight for the train station? I smell a payoff. I say stake her out. See where she goes. Tail is broad. Don't let her get away, but don't get spotted. I'll bring up the car behind you. Bookmakers? Yes. Surprise, surprise. A blonde woman just came in here. She went out the back way. Said she was being watched. How much does she collect? $3,600. She cleaned me out. On the Hammond Kid Galahad fight? You got it. I'm not complaining. We all made a lot of money on that one. Huge plunge on Galahad, and then Hammond knocks the bum out. <laughs> so she collected the money and went out through the back door? Nope. She made a phone call over there, wrote something on a notepad, and then left. What are you doing? old intelligence trick from the Marines. We know where she's headed. Let's get moving. Hammond backed himself to win. And Candy is picking up the winnings. Smart play. Question is, is Candy collecting on Albert's behalf, or is she cheating him too? Car 11K, 11 King, further to your request, Bunko Fraud has three known bookmakers operating out of storefronts in the Hollywood area. Thrifty Liquor, 6106 Santa Monica, The Examiner Drugstore, and a Max Spirits at 1658 North Terrace. KGPL clear. What 
Detectives Phelps and Earl, LAPD. Relax, Cole. You just have a blonde in here, Mervyn? Sure did. I'm just about to close up. She took me to the cleaners. 4,000 clams and change. How long ago did she leave? Maybe five minutes. Called the cab. Asked for a number. I told her there was a card over there by the phone. Yellow cab. We need to get after her, fast. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Can you connect me to the Yellow Cab Company? Hollywood 2187, please. This is Detective Phelps, LAPD. You dispatched a cab to 1487 Ivar Avenue, Hollywood. Yes, sir. Send one round from the pool. Do you have the number of that cab? Number 179. Thanks. We're done playing around. Get Mervyn to give us an address on Ray's place. What now? We're done playing around. Get Mervyn to give us an address on Ray's place. Do you have any idea who Ray is? Sugar Ray. Not now, Mervyn. Cole doesn't have much of a sense of humor at the best of times. Ray runs a shop up on North Cherokee Avenue, just south of Hollywood Boulevard. This broad's planning on cleaning out every bookmaker in town. Hammond needed to make sure he was getting a bigger payday than if he'd taken the flop. Never trust the limeys, especially where a fight's concerned. A mistake we can't seem to stop making. That's the cab waiting up ahead. She's not in the car. Don't get too close. She must be inside. We're on the move again, Cole. After her. Don't lose that cab. Hammond is over the hill. He's a punching bag for the up-and-comers. She knows goddamn place. I think he knows. I think he worked out the place isn't L.A. He's punchy. His brain's going to mush. Winston Churchill? Give me a break. Churchill is a fighter, Roy. Hammond didn't just scribble down the first name he could think of. Pull over. He's heading inside. I think I just saw Hammond. I'll tail him. You get in there and stay with Candy. Make sure you don't let her see you. <laughs> this guy must have escaped the loony bin. You are a modest little person with much to be modest about. That's the cop from the newspaper. Did you read about it? Call an ambulance. Hammond got away. <coughs> he, he said, Just try and sit still, Candy. Who shot you? Was it Albert? Car. I, I, <gasps> They're on the way. I have a patrolman searching the depot. The chief's putting together a manhunt for Hammond. He got the money, right? Looks like it. A tough bird, our limey friend using his girlfriend as the bag woman and then getting greedy over the split? 
He won't make it out of town. That's how you see it? I told you that cocksucker was a crook. Two caliber, one shot fired. The Egyptian theater. So what now? The theater, I guess. We don't have much else to go on. Poor girl. She didn't deserve that. Poor girl. Half the precinct aren't taking a vacation this year because of her. You need to leave town a lot quicker than that if you decide to screw over Mickey C. This seems like a long shot. Aren't they all? Car 11 King, Car 11 King, come in. Car 11 King. Message from the coroner. The cause of death was a knife wound. Repeat, a knife wound. The revolver appears to have belonged to the victim. Casey Son of a bitch. He stabbed her. I thought you said real men use their fists, not guns. That guinea cocksucker. You think he got the money too? Come on, Roy. We're bringing this whole tragedy to its conclusion. Carlos. Your gripe was with me. She was collecting the money for you. Mickey made it clear it was either me or you, and, and I intend to keep on living. She stole those betting slips. She was running out on me. And you were going to let her? No, I let her collect. I set her up. Just like she set me up. Just like my manager set me up. Everyone wanted me to take a dime. Everyone wanted me to take a short money. It's for the best, kid. You were washed up, kid! You couldn't climb, and you were too brave to sink. You were going nowhere! Maybe, but I had heart. I was a Royal Marine, Carlo. If I lost a fight, it wasn't for lack of trying. And it wasn't for lack of courage. I didn't have much. But I had that. I did it for you, and that's how you repay me! You did it for yourself, so did little boy. You did it and make a quick buck, and Candy did it and make her dream come true. Blah, blah, blah! I've got the money, all I need to do is get rid of you. It's gonna be a shame, kid, but that's business. Arcaro, put down your weapon. You're making a big mistake, Arcaro. Stay down. Come on, Cole. Carlo's a dead man. Hammond, too, and I'm fine.
It's time to come out now, Hammond. Put the gun down, Roy. That son of a bitch owes me a lot of money. Catch. Escania sails from New York, Hammond. Be on the next train and don't ever come back. Why? Because I was a Marine and I once lacked courage. Everyone deserves a second chance. Now beat it. Fuck you! That English prick is getting away with my money, Phelps! Donnelly and the Homicide Squad send their best, Phelps. They're more than pleased that you wrapped up the Edwards killing. They're a little mystified about the motive. You have any ideas on that? Uh, crime of passion, sir. Uh, looks like some sort of love triangle between the manager, the fighter, and a, uh, his girlfriend. No sign of the scrapper? No, sir. Looks like he left town after the fight. Okay. It's homicide's problem now. Good work, gentlemen. One eighty seven at fifty eight ten Murata Avenue. Homicide wants you over there. The coroner thinks the broad was whacked using the army morphine. Don't say anything, Roy. Just get over there. Seem distracted. We recovered the morphine. Some of it might be unaccounted for, so what? That's life. We did our job. Closing one case opens another. Do you have any idea what is really going on while we're wasting our time following this stuff? Are you going to tell me? The deals being done right now will change the face of LA forever, and we're wasting our time on some hump. Someone's little girl. Visit the morgue at the end of the month when the John and Jane Doe's are cremated. Their percentages, the odds for and against lightning striking. Second floor, apartment six, in the back. Thanks. Mal will be pleased. Well, that's hardly conclusive, given the number of those things we've come across recently. The autopsy will confirm it one way or another. Bukowski, you made homicide. That I did. Good to see you, Phelps. You two want a hug? Or can we get on with it? Relax, Rusty. 26 years old, fashion model. Found in the tub by the cleaning lady, Mrs. Reynoldson. She called it in. We heard Carruthers thinks... Carruthers likes to make work for people. Overdose of sleeping pills. Falls asleep in the tub, rest in peace. Case closed. Here, here. Mal is 100% that it's murder. Do you mind if I take a look around? Sure. Go right ahead.
is all top end of town stuff. Gives us somewhere to look. place to start. Beautiful girl. Her clothes certainly aren't from the Sears catalog. jacket. I don't know anyone under 45 who would wear one. Looks like barbiturates. Barbiturates. What else is rattling around in this thing? We should speak to a doctor. Prescribing both drugs would make her life a roller coaster. Rusty thinks it's a waste of time. What's your theory? Come on, Mal. Tell us why we were dragged down here. If the victim was alive when she entered the tub, water would have entered her lungs. The water is violently churned in the windpipe as she drowns. The result is that a lot of foam is generated. This foam is found at the mouth and nostrils in almost all cases of real drowning. Notice anything about our Vic? May I took a look? Be my guest. Take a closer look at her head and neck. The neck is bruised pretty badly. Very unusual ring. Could be wrong, but it looks like a black sapphire. are a classic sign of morphine and the bruises tell their own story i think one man held her down and another held her arm and injected her they put her in the bath to try to cover it as a drowning and spread a trail of barbiturates take a look around outside on your way out and see if you can find the sorets it would make my theory and morphine would have been very quick and there wouldn't have been much of a struggle okay so find two guys who recently bought sorets and weren't junkies and you might be onto something this is her in these photos. It's something else. Yes, 
I'm Detective Phelps. I'm here to try and help Julia. Do you mind answering some questions? Virginia Reynoldson, I'm just so shocked. I feel like there's something I should be doing, someone I should call. We can make those calls, ma'am. Who needs to be notified? That's just it. I don't know. Miss Julie doesn't have any family in town. Someone has to set her affairs in order. Um, Mr. Henderson, maybe? I, who else is there? I, I don't know. If you give the details to the other detectives, ma'am, they can try and get in contact. Was Miss Randall depressed about something? Upset? No more than normal. What are you hiding here, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julie was obviously disturbed about something. I have no idea what you're talking about. She was taking barbiturates. She couldn't sleep. You must have seen them in her room. You've seen the pillbox, the things she hid in there. I don't know how she supported herself. Always new clothes and jewelry. She lived like a movie star, a princess. Does modeling really pay that well? Did Miss Randall have many friends visit? I'm not sure. I only come around twice a week. Why are you lying to me, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julia had men stay here. I will not speak ill of the dead. You can't prove that. Who owns the smoking jacket? I wouldn't like to tell tales, you understand. That's Mr. Henderson's. An older man, very distinguished looking. He seemed very much in love with her. Where would we find him? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. He said he lives in San Francisco. What was it like working for Miss Randall? Perfectly fine, officer. Mrs. Reynoldson, it seems like there's something you want to tell me. She was very high strung. Lovely one moment and screaming at you the next. She wanted it all and she wanted it damn quick. Of course, being so beautiful, it seemed like she was going to get it. Not the way it's turned out, though, is it? Thanks, Mrs. Reynoldson. You've been very helpful. One of the other detectives will take your statement and then you can go home. I think our work is done here. Stefan Rusty, we'll take a look around outside and then follow up these leads. Can you get some guys to run down the jacket? You think Carruthers has called it right? He rarely gets it wrong. I don't know. I'm with Galloway. I've met enough girls in my time who can't handle their dope. What can I help you with today? LAPD, ma'am. I hope I haven't done anything wrong. No, ma'am. We're making some inquiries about Julia Randall. Does she work here? No, I had to let her go. Is she in some sort of trouble? She was found dead this morning. How long had Julia worked as a model? Well, she worked in New York before coming here. She was a very beautiful girl. Could you tell us why you let Miss Randall go? Husbands sometimes come in here with their wives. When Julia Randall modeled, the husbands were often more interested in her than they were their wives' dresses. The wives weren't happy, and neither was I. Did she have any close friends here? Actually, yes. Heather Swanson. Would you like to speak with her? I'd like that very much. Please don't inform her about Miss Randall's death. Very well, officer. Heather, these gentlemen are from the LAPD. I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. I understand that you worked with Julia Randall, Miss Swanson? Yes. Julia helped me get my job here. She's not in any kind of trouble, is She's she? She's a hellraiser, isn't she? Lives a fast life. Oh, no. 
maybe Mrs. Stanley would call her that, but I wouldn't. She's full of life, full of wonderful company. That's a lovely engagement ring. Do you like it? Henry gave it to I'm me. I'm very interested in engagement rings. Do you mind if I take a closer look? That's some pearl, Miss Swanson. Would have cost Henry a fortune. He must really love you. How did you meet Julia? I was introduced through my fiance, Henry Arnett. Henry is your beau. Tell us about it. Yes, he is. Henry has a fashion business. He and Julia have been friends for years. Are Miss Randall and Mr. Henderson engaged? Who's he? She was wearing a sapphire engagement ring. Someone must have given it to her. She never mentioned a man named Henderson to me. That's all for now, Miss Swanson. Could you ask your fiancé to visit Hollywood Police Station? It would be very helpful to our inquiry. Now, wait a moment. I don't think I'll pass on that message until you tell me why you're asking all these questions. Julia Randall was found dead this morning. What? Oh, no. Oh, I can't believe it. She was so full of life. Nice move, not telling old Sweet Lips in there about her friend taking the big jump till we were half out the door. Very slick. I figured we'd get more out of her that way. You're learning, Phelps. We'll make a vice cop out of you yet. Stoneman, Office 505. I swear, if we locked up every doctor in this town, Vice would be able to work half days. LAPD, we'd like to see Dr. Stoneman. Dr. Stoneman is with a patient. Would you like to wait? No, we wouldn't. Tell him we want to see him now. There's no need to be rude. Save it, sister. Dr. Stoneman, I have some gentlemen from the LAPD here to see you. Um, send them in, please. I'll, uh, I'll see this patient again after they've left. Your investigation is much more important than my sciatica. I'm just in pain here. Dr. Stoneman, we are investigating the death of one of your patients, Julia Randall. I'm very sorry to hear that. Do you mind if we ask you some questions about Ms. Randall? Uh, um, not if it doesn't compromise doctor-patient privilege, detective. How well did you know Ms. Randall? Barely at all. Um, she'd only been a patient six months or so. Julia Randall has been your patient for nearly a year. I'm sure you know that. Do you doubt my veracity, detective? Do you have access to my patient records? Your prescriptions contradict you, doctor. Miss Randall was in the fashion business, as you probably know. She was jumped up on Benzedrine by day and knocked down by sleeping pills at night. I, I told her to slow up, but 
No. Life was too short for her. And you supplied the prescription for the Benzedrine. It's not illegal, detective. A lot of young women in her line of work use it for weight loss. You wrote Julia Randall a prescription for Benzedrine. How can you account for that? Miss Randall was in the uh, fashion business. She wanted to control her weight. Benzedrine is addictive, as I'm sure you know, doctor. As I warned her, but she was determined. She said she needed it to control her appetite. Sounds like you knew her pretty well. I knew the line of work she was involved in. That'll be all for now, Dr. Stoneman. We'll be in touch. Operator, give me R and I. Phelps, batch 1247. How can I help, Detective? Any messages? Yes, Detective. The coroner's been asking to speak to you. I can connect the call if you like. Please, thank you. Al? Cole, can you get over here? I just finished the autopsy. Sure thing, Mal. We'll be right over. Detectives Phelps and Earl here to see the coroner. Yes, Detective. He's waiting for you in the examination room. Isn't he the cop they've been talking about on the radio? Want another accommodation? Skeleton goes into a bar and orders a beer and a mop. Cole, Roy, I have some information for you. You're the only person enjoying this, Mal. Get on with it. The bruising confirms two sets of hands, so we have two killers. Death was caused by heart failure due to an overdose of morphine. Have you dragged us down here to gloat? We already heard your theory. We agree that she was murdered. Yes, of course. I have something else to show you. All right, Mal, what gives? The dead guy's name is Jimmy LeBlanc, career burglar. He came in this morning. Someone stove his head in with a lump of two-by-four. So what? Good riddance. I found two serrets in his jacket pocket. Wow. Hang on a minute, Roy. We're listening, Mal. No sign of morphine use and no metabolized morphine in his blood. Scratch marks on his face. Which could be from getting his head remodeled. Time of death, Mal. Maybe an hour or two after the Randall girl. So you're saying Laughing Boy here could be one of our killers? That's a hell of a long shot. Thanks, Mal. We'll check it out. I found something else. Sorry, I don't play. I don't know if it's significant. His wallet was empty. The only other things he was carrying were the harmonica and the morphine. Carruthers. Yeah, he's here. I'll send him over. They have a guy called Henry Arnett in interview two for you next door. Let me know how you get on. Sure, Mal. And thanks for the lead. Sure, Mal. Thanks for the lead. He ran the light on Olympic, and we finally collared him on Temple. Mr. Arnett, I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. Thanks for coming in. Call me Henry. It's the least I could do. Terrible news about Julia. How well did you know Julia Randall? Vaguely. I'm in the clothing business, and Julia occasionally modeled for me. 
He's asking whether you banged her in a chuck on the shoulder fraternity kind of way. I'm engaged to be married. It wouldn't be polite. Answer the question. This will remain private. Heather won't have to know. <sighs> yes. We had relations. Miss <laughs> Randall's landlady said she was seeing an older man. Could have been. I wasn't privy to all the details of Julia's private life. Henry, I don't like when people lie to me. She was seeing a man named Henderson. You know who I'm talking about. Easy on, detective. I may have heard of Henderson, but I don't know his full name. I think he's from New York or someplace back east. That's funny. Julia told her cleaning lady that he lived in San Francisco. Okay, you got me. I don't know where he's from. Julia wanted money. She always wanted money. She thought she could get something from this guy. She was wearing a distinctive engagement ring. You think she might have convinced him to buy it for her? Maybe he did, yeah. Maybe he and Julia were getting serious. <laughs> Ever heard of a Jimmy LeBlanc? No. Should I have? Is, is he an entertainer or something? So you wouldn't have any reason to believe that LeBlanc would be involved in Julia Randall's murder? If this guy is a criminal, he, he might have been involved. But like I said, I've never heard of this LeBlanc character. <laughs> Heather told us that you were in fashion. That's right. You got a stakeout down on second later tonight. Some kind of traveling salesman? Once I got out of the Corps, I used my... You were in the Marines? Sure. I'm proud of it. The Fighting Sixth. You were in the Sixth Marines? Yes. I was a captain. Which company? Uh, various companies. We had a lot of casualties. Which engagements? Okinawa. A couple of other places. That will be all for now, Henry. You've been very helpful. That son of a bitch was never in the Marines. Why'd you let him off the hook? Because we're giving him a couple of minutes before we start tailing him. Arnett is an amateur. We need to find out who killed the girl. Can you pass this on to Bukowski? Have him check the place out and go through his records. Sure, I'll pass it on. Thanks. Can you also have R and I run the records on a Jimmy LeBlanc and find out who was his last arresting officer? Have him get in touch via KGPL when they have some information. He's in that car at the lights. He was squirming like a worm in there. Don't you love it when they pull the war hero excuse? Actually, maybe you don't. money and fast. Get in there and find out what he pawned. I'll stick with him, see how he intends to spend the money. Too much slack. I get closer. Hoof it, Phelps. I'll bring the car around when I'm done here. That's right, Mexico City. One-way ticket, please. Next available seat. That would be one day from now. Is that OK? It's going to have to be.
LAPD, the man who just came in here, he bought a ticket? Yes, sir, to Mexico City, tomorrow night. If you hear from him again, don't mention this conversation. What have you got? He bought a ticket from Mexico City, tomorrow night. That's good, but this is better. God, it's Fabergé. Should have seen the look on the pawnbroker's face when I told him to hand it over. The guy who owned the joint thought it was worth at least 10 large for a cigarette case. Arnett only got 600 clams. Cole Phelps, batch 1247. How could I help, Detective? Messages for me, please. Yes, Detective. Detectives Bukowski and Galloway request you return to the Hollywood Station. They have information in the Julia Randall case. Any luck with the arrest record check on Jimmy LeBlanc? Yes, Detective. Jimmy LeBlanc's last arresting officer was patrolman Fred Wallace. He's posted the Hollywood Ninth Beat Sunset Boulevard between Gordon and Wilcox. Thanks, ma'am. Come on, let's give him a hand. Right behind you, Wallace, Detective Phelps. Wallace, go left. I'm going right after this little prick in the alley. Thanks. Outstanding warrant, armed robbery. Knocked over a drugstore back there, and it looks like he brought his whole posse with him. Bad luck for them. They're all yours now. We need some information. Ever heard of a burglar goes by the name of Jimmy LeBlanc? Sure. I nabbed Jimmy on a burglary beef a couple of years back. They cut through a music shop and into a jewelry store. He got four years. I miss his partner, though. His partner? Big guy. I had him cornered, and he picked up this huge display case and threw it out a plate glass window. Then he vaulted out of there like something out of Barnum and Bailey. He got away. I would have had him, except for LeBlanc yelling, run for it, Willie. Do you think he was an acrobat of some sort? More like a strong man, a wrestler, or a boxer, that kind of thing. Thanks. You've been a big help. You haven't done too badly yourself. You're suggesting LeBlanc is still working with Willie? A strong man held down Randall while someone administered the morphine. Someone with muscle opened up LeBlanc's skull. Could be.
We caught up with Mal. He's given us the dope on the Blanc. He worked burglaries with a big guy. Goes by the name of Willie. He might be our killer. Can you work boxing gyms, the Y, promoters, that kind of stuff? Since when have you started giving orders, Phelps? And where's the burglary angle? There was no sign of a... That's where our net comes in. Next stop, we speak to Lacey about a list of recent burglaries. The guy's a bum. His office is a front, and he's behind on the rent and his phone bill. And he's skipping town tomorrow. Let's get him in and beat it out of him. Do you want to bring in the killer, Rusty? You could be too smart for your own good, Phelps. We've been talking about that, haven't we, Roy? Stefan? Finbar? Sir, I need the contraband list. Item stolen over the last year. Hang on, I'll dig out a copy for you. Here you go. Thanks. Is the cigarette case on there? I gave his wife a task. I said, I'll share and love him more. You trying to sit me down? Well, are there any leads? That's true. It's here. Arnett must be out of his mind trying to move this while under a murder cloud. Did you know Julia Randall's ring. It's here. Even the engagement ring was purloined. Our net is a cad. Seems Julia wasn't the first board society girl to hide her bennies in that pillbox. So you and Rusty have been having discussions. Anything you would like to tell me, partner? Phelps, don't be so touchy. Rusty had his best ever clearance rate working with you. Even if the cases he worked on can't be discussed. We were just comparing notes. You're a Boonaroo case, man, Phelps. One of the best I've ever seen. Thanks. You gotta learn to take a compliment, Phelps. Make sure your donate today. Nice house. LAPD, ma'am. Is Mrs. Evestrom in? She is. Would you follow me, sir? I am Mrs. Evestrom. How may I help you? We appear to have recovered some stolen goods that belong to you, ma'am. Yes, of course. That terrible burglary. Would you like something to drink? No, thank you, ma'am. We have some questions, if you don't mind. Why would I mind, young man, if you are returning 43 pieces of my property? Okay, before we get down to that, I'll have a scotch. Thanks, straight up. Maria, can you get the detective a drink, please? Can you describe to us what was stolen? It would be easier to describe what wasn't stolen, detective. <laughs> a priceless tiara that has been in the family for 50 years. A Fabergé cigarette case that was worth $25,000. Why are you lying about the value of your jewelry, Mrs. Evestrom? Who do you think you are? making heinous accusations in my own home. We recovered the cigarette case from a pawnbroker. No one knows the real value of an item better than those guys. I inflated its value for the insurance claim. There, are you satisfied? I 
daughter's boyfriend was quite taken with the case. I think he was even more disappointed than I was when it was stolen. What can you tell us about the burglary? That terrible night, at least a year ago. But let's not go into that. Let's talk about what you've recovered. Were you in the house when the burglary took place? Good heavens, no. I was at a social function held by a Dr. Harold Stoneman and his lovely wife. I returned home and all of my things were missing. That's about it for now, Mrs. Eastrom. The department will get in touch and let you know how you can recover your valuables. You have only mentioned a few of the items that have been stolen, Detective. What else has been recovered? You see, Phelps, that's why you get the drinks in early. Hello, Mother. Hello, detectives. What is going on? We'd like to ask exactly the same question. You have met my daughter this morning at work. Oh, mother and father divorced. I took my father's name. The detectives recovered some of the things that were stolen, darling. Well, what did you find? A sapphire ring on the corpse of Julia Randall. What are you talking about? Your engagement ring, Miss Swanson. Would you be surprised to know that it was part of the proceeds of a burglary? That's an outrageous allegation. Yes, it is. I suggest we go straight to Henry Arnett's place and sort this mess out. Brand cigarettes, Tex Williams. Now, I'm a fella with a heart of gold with the ways of a gentleman, I've been told. The kind of a fella that wouldn't even harm a... They've been talking about Come on, radio. sister. Let's find out who your fiance really is. Welcome, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you a resident? LAPD detectives, we're here to speak to Henry Arnett. Oh, uh, Mr. Arnett, um, uh, apartment 30. You can take the lift. Thank you. Well, isn't this just nice and awkward? Looks like he got you good, Phelps. Yeah, he really packs a wallop. How did I get back here? Under your own steam, miraculously. He came in through the window, said hello, and then keeled over. How was our net? He's coming around, too. He's all hopped up. Good time to get some answers. You missing something, Henry?
you told Heather you're honeymooning without her? Expensive watch, Henry. A graduation present from my parents. Advice? Get his story. Let's see Henry talk his way out of this with Heather in the room. We know all about the jewelry ring. You and Randall and LeBlanc and Willie doing the legwork. I'm in the fashion business. You're lying, Henry. How can you prove that I'm involved, detective? Because you pawned a Fabergé cigarette case today for $600 a case that is on a list of stolen items. It was Julia's idea. Get a list of society parties, find out where and when, and then have to guess a little. Julia was desperate for money. No matter how much we made, she always wanted more. Why did Reed and LeBlanc kill Julia Randall? I, I wanted to stop, to get out of that life. To marry Heather, she'd have. Julia told the others that, that they were out, that she was going to create a, a new gang. You're lying, Arnett. I think you ordered them to kill her. It was made to look like suicide, and when the coroner saw through that, you knew it was time to run. I told you I was involved in the burglaries. I had nothing to do with Julia's death. Why would I need to run? Have you told Miss Swanson that you're leaving for Mexico City tomorrow night? That it's a one-way ticket? Henry? Tell me it isn't true. I had no choice. I wanted to marry Heather. I told Julia I wanted out, and she laughed in my face. I had to pay Willie and Jimmy a fortune to do her, and now I'm completely broke. What you are, Buster, is under arrest. Who is Henderson, and what is his involvement? Tell them what you know, Henry. I'll stand by you if you'll only tell the truth. There is no Henderson. Tell me about your first burglary, and don't lie. I can't remember. I don't keep a list of these things. Your first burglary was a Dr. Harold Stoneman. Do you want to explain how he is involved, or shall I? Henderson is Stoneman. He was crazy about Julia. She could get him to do whatever she wished. He threw the parties, and we arranged the burglaries. Julia never let him touch her. She just kept him hanging on the promise. Drove the good doctor almost insane. Henry Arnett, you are under arrest for burglary and for the murder of Julia Randall. Henderson is Stoneman, all right? I'm not the guy you want. Go talk to the good doctor. Oh, we will, knucklehead. Meanwhile, we're fitting you for convict stripes. the wedding's off. He only robbed her mother and killed her best friend. Cut the guy some slack. So how does the doctor fit in? That's what we're about to find out. Maybe we should ask him to give you a quick once over. That meathead gave you one hell of a pasting. I've had worse. You should have seen yourself staggering back in there like a drunken sailor. Next time you can take the runner, Roy. I didn't box in the Marines, though, did I? 
Should have never told you that. When I spy a lamb on the riverbed. Doctor, to give us something to make this all better. Hang on a moment, sister. Tell him it's Henry Arnett, and tell him it's urgent. I can't do that. Tell him. Or I'll charge you with obstruction of justice. Doctor, I'm afraid Mr. Arnett is here to see you, and he says it's urgent. Send him in. I told you never to come. Tell us the truth, Doctor. I'm so glad you came. Prison will be better than insane with grief. You, will you testify in court that Arnett and Randall did these robberies? They organized the robberies. Julie would get the names of the guests attending my wife's parties. Didn't matter how much money I showered upon her, it was never enough. She never really cared for me. Doctor, I'm afraid you're under arrest. Practice. You'll call Dr. Gerard. No, 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 no. Please don't cry. I want to see no one. Not my wife, or my children, nor my friends. And I don't want a lawyer. Just lock me up and throw away the key. What have I done? Didn't see that coming. Ah! <laughs> Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. I need an ambulance on the coroner. Immediately to the offices of Dr. Harold Stoneman, 1646 Ivor Street, Hollywood. En route, Detective. You have a message. Detective Bukowski says the suspect is named Wilson Willie the Wolf Reed, former wrestler. Last known address is an apartment building at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. Detective Bukowski says to meet them there. On our way. We have an address for the runner. Let's try and wrap this up, then. He's around here somewhere. A big guy. Neighbors say he always wears basketball shoes and a cream jacket. And get this. Kids around here say he plays the harmonica. Find the game well and have the commander set up a dragnet. We want the area closed off. We'll take this out of the street. A harmonica playing wrestler. That's a weird one. Think he knits as well? Just keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. We don't want him to bolt on us. Wait. Bull. You hear that?
Wilson Reed, LAPD, give yourself up. here somewhere. No place to go unless you grew wings. There he is. Waste the son of a bitch. Bitch really picked a spot for it up here, didn't he? Julia Randall's folks are flying in from New York tomorrow to claim the body. I saw her on the slab. So perfect. Looked like she was made of porcelain. She really made an impression on me. Julia had that impact on a lot of men. Christ, it's cold. You guys did good work here today. Roy! I think you should buy your brother officers a drink. Do you now? That's very generous of you, Lieutenant. It's over, Cole. Looks like you're one of the lucky ones. Say goodbye to your friend Hank, Jack. He was your friend too, Cole. Is this how you're going to leave him? Are you wounded? Not a scratch, Kelso. Well, get up and get out of that fucking hole! Find a stretcher while you're at it so we can get him out of here. Who's the senior officer here? I guess that's you, Cole. You were up here all night? Yes, sir. And your command? Gone, sir. Sorry to hear that, son. God damn it, we have beaten these bastards back. It's the beginning of the end, and it was one here. You're a goddamn hero, son. What's your name? Lieutenant Phelps, sir. I'm recommending you for the Silver Star and promoting you to first lieutenant. Earl, 
Phelps, a shooting at the 111 Club, 6232 Hollywood Boulevard. Sounds like a homicide beef. Two of the dead guys caught in the crossfire were carrying army surplus morphine. Get over there before homicide tramples all over the place. We already cleared that up. Judge in Pasadena took the big sleep yesterday. He had a personal stash of 20 cigarettes. Appears we didn't get all of it. Parker and Green are going toe-to-toe -to -toe for the top job. There's a change in the wind. About time. This wind will be like a tornado, Phelps. Parker's got a puritanical streak. You never know we'll get swept up in a thing like that. Homicide guys are already inside. Bukowski. Phelps, back again. We're here about the morphine. Over by the bandstand. You can see what's left of the owner, Eddie McGoldrick, 26, former Marine. I know Eddie McGoldrick. He was a non-com in my old unit. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, Cole. The waitress said he recently came into some money and bought the club. Who are the other Vicks? Two musicians, Biddleston and Bo. And get this, they used to be in a four-piece, but the trombone player and the drummer OD'd. Don't tell me. Lamont and Tyree? We've met the rest of the band. Now they're a no piece. <laughs> Do you mind if we take a look around? Be my guest. You might want a word with the hostess, too. I'll keep her company until you're ready. Must have pumped a dozen rounds into him. Certainly sends a message. When you're ready to have a civil conversation, we can try again. Well-maintained, custom case. Someone cared for this instrument. What's that click? Never the same. more than the trumpet. We should follow up on the musician angle. He kept his stash close at hand. left in circulation. A dozen packs to a carton, a hundred cartons or more, looks like a couple of months supply. yet. We could check on the serial numbers. Is this guy hunting for bear? Look at these things. They're BARs. You get the odd guy who sneaks one of them home from the war. How did he get three of them? Army surplus morphine, army surplus weapons, army surplus valors. Sound familiar? We should get back to the station and check the details of what exactly was lifted from that ship.
Ma'am, I'm Detective Phelps, administrative by squad. Welcome to the 111 Club, Detective. Feels like I've had half the LAPD in here today already. Any idea who did the shooting? No idea. It was my day off. If I had been here, honey, I'd be full of holes just like the others. I want to level with me, miss, before we start taking an interest in you. This place has been on the slide for years. Eddie turns up, buys the club, then we start getting visits from tough guys. Next thing you know, we have the St. Valentine's Day massacre. Are you getting the picture? Tell us about Eddie. Eddie didn't know a thing about running a nightclub. He came into some money and waltzed in and bought the place. The previous owner thought all his Christmases had come at once. Where do you think he got the money? My guess was that he was selling the sort of quality product that you don't need to advertise. Thank you for your help, ma'am. Eddie was in over his head, but he was a decent boss. Take a break, boys. We would like them to stay, Miss Lickman. We're making inquiries into the recent deaths of four musicians. Since when have the police cared about dead black men? Good point. We don't. What we care about is two tons of army surplus morphine showing up on the street. If you care about working in this town, you better give me something on Biddleston and Bo. Or their knucklehead buddies, Tyree and Lamont. And this is your idea of making inquiries under Stumfura? I've told you a thousand times about speaking that German gibberish at me, Elsa. Roy! How about you get a drink while I see to this? Will you sit down? Why antagonize him, Elsa? You know what he's capable of. Ask your questions, head officer. We have work to do. People are dying of overdoses. If you know anything about it, you need to tell me. I can't help you. A lot of cats are into the thing. There's nothing special about your boys. You can do this the easy way with me, or I can call my partner back over. I can assure you he's a lot less sensitive. You think your threats frighten me? Black man don't supply nothing. You think there's a black man in this town holding on to two tons of morphine? He'd be dead in a minute. White man supplies, black man buys. My partner mentioned a couple of names. You recognize them? I have no idea what you're talking about. The only way you're going to get rid of me is to give me an answer. I knew Cornell. We worked together a few years ago. He loved the music, but the music didn't love him. What does that mean? It means that he just wasn't that good. He was a sad, lonely cat. Boys, take five minutes, please. I need to have a private word with the officer. Why do you ask people to risk talking about a subject that could have them jailed? Drugs are against the law, Elsa. And you're so full of courage, you have never felt ashamed. This is getting us nowhere. Do you think you'll win your war against narcotic? It's not my war. It's against the law. My job is to prosecute the laws of this city. Do you think you can stop people from needing drugs, detective? I'm asking the questions here. Then why do you come to me with your stupid questions? You know who controls the drugs in this city. It's not enough to just survive, Elsa. You have to try and make the world a better place. Brave words. And very noble. But... Words are just words, Cole Phelps. She's right. We need to pay a visit to the mixer. Cohen, do you know where to find him? This time of day? You'll find him holding court at the Macambo. He can wait. There's something I need to be sure of. Give me till tomorrow morning. Don't do anything I wouldn't do, partner.
much slack. Getting closer. LAPD, we're looking for Mayor Cohen. I believe he has lunch here. There's not going to be any trouble, is there? Which table? Number three, if you'll follow me. My acting coach says I have real talent. Can I get a bowl of that chili? LAPD, we have some questions. Hi, regarding... Mickey. How's it hanging? Fine, just fine, Roy. I see you brought Iga Beaver along. Hope he's not going to put the shakes on me again. Cole Phelps, Mickey Cohen. Good afternoon. <laughs> he has manners. Aren't you a little green for this kid? Me, Johnny Stompanato, Cole. He has the biggest schlong in Hollywood and the smallest gun. Or maybe that's the other way around. I can never quite remember. You're a funny guy, Roy. Haven't I always said what a funny guy Roy is? And how much fun it would be to get together with him sometime? Poor Johnny. He's the dark, sensitive type. He's a serviceman, too, Cole. Johnny was in Okinawa. You were in the crotch? Sixth Marines. The lieutenant who won the Silver Star upon Sugarloaf. I've heard of you. Something like that. All right, have we finished flirting? You got something to discuss, Roy? Or are you going to stand around beating the meat while my lunch gets cold? We have some questions. Do I need my lawyer? Your brother-in-law, Lenny Finkelstein, was selling stolen morphine. He had one-third of the shipment. Old news, kid. I don't know anything about what Lenny was up to. So I'm supposed to believe that you don't know what happened to the rest of the shipment? Lenny, God rest his soul, was a moron. He was family, though, and I haven't made a beef about that, so count yourself lucky, kid. The H is a filthy habit, and I don't condone it. The simple solution would be to have all the dope fiends put down. So you don't know where he got the morphine? Kid, ask a question you might get an answer to. We believe there's a link between a group of Marines and the morphine stolen from the SS Coolridge. One of those Marines was shot to death in a club last night. I wouldn't know anything about that. So you haven't heard anything about what happened at the 111 Club? What can I say, kid? I'm shocked that in the land of opportunity, Uncle Sam's finest feel the need to resort to crime. It's a dangerous business. I can attest to that. I'd recommend they get out of the life. Quickly. A few Negroes saying goodbye on the sidewalk will never make the papers, Mickey. But we had a judge in Pasadena say adios the other day. Prominent white people popping their clogs makes everyone nervous. You know dope has never been my thing, Roy. It's always been for schmendricks like uh, Jack D and Jimmy Utley. But uh, I'll ask around and I'll get back to you. Hey, you boys want some lunch? How about a drink? We'll take a rain check on that. Come on, Cole, we're leaving.
We have to cut that dope. It looks bad with people dying. We have to get the rest of it. There's no way of watering down the stuff in those little packages. You have to put the squeeze on those guys and get the rest of it. They don't seem to type the fright that easy. We'll see. Oh, that fucking rat Stoker has gone public about Brenda. Who is Brenda? Brenda is L.A.'s most famous madam. And everyone knows it? Of course everyone knows. Brenda pays her way. Are we cops or a collection agency? Ors have been around since the Bible. Our job is to keep it off the street so Joe Citizen and his wife can stroll around unmolested. Then we should change the law. Are you out of your mind? Every politician in America is against prostitution. Except when they're using them. So where does Stoker come in? He objects to the LAPD and the administration taking its cut. Is everyone in on this? Yeah, and that's the problem. From a little acorn does a large tree grow. He could bring the whole thing crashing down on us. Aren't you supposed to be working the... Sir, do you know which robber detectives are working the army surplus theft from the Coolidge? Caldwell and McManus. I saw Caldwell in the squad room not long ago if you want to speak to him. Thank you, sir. We'll do that. This way. Hey, can you give me a hand? I got a hard case in this place. Is any of you two free? Yeah, the bum took a swipe at me. Put him down Eric, with a sap. You got a minute? Sure, Cole. Anytime. You've been working the docks robbery on the SS Coolridge? Yeah, that's right. So how do you see it? Inside job. Either the guys working the wharves or some of the guys on the ship. What else was taken apart from the morphine? A case of BARs, a case of Thompsons, a crate of Valor smokes. Homicide just recovered three BARs and a mountain of cigarettes at a shooting at the 111 Club. No kidding. I better get over there. Do you have a copy of the manifest? Yeah. Here it is. So, how do we connect the docks robbery to the mess at the 111 Club? Now the DA wants my head. Yeah, I'm thinking of moving up to a 45. I want to Enough put them to arm one three room. companies. Here's our backroom arsenal from the 111 Club. Mouthpiece tore strips off me. This is the crate we recovered. Case was thrown out. Now the DA wants my Half head. Half a million surrets loose on the streets of L.A. Some of these guys are from my old unit. They must have finally shipped home. Kelso, Sheldon, McGoldrick. McGoldrick was on the boat? Sure, we checked him out. McGoldrick bought the 111 Club, Harry. His brains are all over the bar. Looks like whoever stole the dope is getting muscled. By whom? Dragner or Cohen. They control the hop. Detectives, KGPL's going crazy. Shots fired at 1384 North Bronson. Some guy with an automatic spraying a Hollywood bus. They want every car. Go!
phone number and restaurant table. It's one of the BARs. Alvaro. He's one of the guys from the ship? His name was on the manifest. Looks like McGoldrick wasn't the only one to get a message. Hey, Alvaro. Hey, Lieutenant. He's just a plain detective now, Chico. Who's the jughead? This is my partner, Roy Earl. We just want to find out what happened. What happened is that someone took a shot at my bus. And the cops turned up and started treating me like I'm some sort of pachuco punk. My people have been in California for over 300 years. Very fucking admirable, Felix. You hear anything about the big heist on the Cool Ridge? Yeah, I heard about it. So what happened? Not much. Uh, the cops came and interviewed me and all the other guys on the ship. I was down at the 111 Club this morning, waiting for the medical examiner to scrape Eddie McGoldrick's brains off the bar. You want to tell me anything about that? I heard that Eddie came into some money. Too bad he didn't keep a low profile. It was a tough break to get through Okinawa and then have to buy it back home. <laughs> Who's shooting at you, Felix? How the fuck do I know? The dead guy on the roof works for Mickey Cohen. Why would Cohen want you dead? Man, I don't know anything about Mickey Cohen or, or any of those gangsters. Your name was in the sniper's notebook. Level with me, Felix. Cohen thinks because we were on the boat, we have the morphine. Courtney's meeting those guys to sort it out. Courtney Sheldon? Yeah. You remember Sheldon, don't you, Cole? We'll be in touch, Felix. You heard that Jack is in L.A.? I saw his name on the manifest. He's been here a couple of months. Sure glad to see you got over your wound, Lieutenant. I mean... Detective? Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, Detective? I need an address on a Jack Kelso. Just a second. Jack Kelso, apartment four, 1408 North El Centro Avenue, Hollywood. Thanks, man. How well did you know the owner? Goldrick? Well enough. He was in my unit. That's some cruel irony. You survive the war, then get blown to pieces back home. It happens more than you'd think. Young guys trying to adjust to normal life, getting mixed up in the wrong crowds. The kid had just bought a nightclub. I'd say he got mixed up in the right crowds. Until someone filled him full of holes. You don't come into that kind of money that quickly without pissing a few people off. Hello, Jack. This is Detective Roy Earl. Hello, Cole. We would like a word. Would you like to come inside? Actually, we'd prefer if you'd come downtown with us. Do you mind? Do I have any choice? No. You don't. Are you going to tell me what this is all about? It would be better for all of us if we discussed it at the station. Bad move, Cole. How have you been, Jack? Cut the crap. You pick me up in front of my apartment like a common criminal and then expect small talk? Fuck you.
Do you know that there's a gang war going on in L.A. trying to recover that stolen morphine? That has nothing to do with me. I'm sure it would be gripping to hear more of your life story, boys, but the truth is, I don't give a fuck. You were on the boat, Kelso. What happened? Do you really think a bunch of Marines could muscle in on the dope rackets in this town? Between the vice squad and the mob, I hear it's pretty sewn up. You better watch your mouth. Did you know that Eddie McGoldrick recently came into money and bought a nightclub? No, I didn't know that. And you didn't know that some mobsters blew his brains out last night? No, I didn't. You heard that a crate of VARs went missing? No, I didn't. I saw Felix Alvaro today. Good. How was he? A little pale. One of Mickey Cohen's goons had emptied about 60 VAR rounds into the bus he was driving. A public bus in the middle of Hollywood. Are you going to tell me what's going on? Or do more innocent people have to die? Yeah, and what's in it for you, Cole? Newspapers? More glory? Another promotion? Another medal at the expense of men who fought for their country? Count me out. What do you know about the army surplus robbery from the Cool Ridge Jack? What I know is that on three separate occasions, you would have been dead if it weren't for me. I don't know anything about the robbery. People are dying because morphine intended to help servicemen is being used on the street. Now we have guys from our old unit being killed by mobsters. We can put two and two together, Jack. Gratitude isn't a concept that has much effect on you, is it, Cole? Answer the question, Jack. Let's get this over with. I was interviewed when the robbery took place. I don't have anything further to add. Jack, we just want information. Bullshit, Cole. Did you seriously believe that dragging me down here would get me to give up my own guys? You call yourself a Marine? Trying to make a name for yourself with this shit heel? Look at this chump with his $200 suit and $2,000 car. The tough guy act is really impressive. I like you, Jack. I'd like to make you for this. I really would. I'm going to be working on it and keeping an eye on you. You can go now. Shooting Robert Steiner, 6780 West Sunset Boulevard. The victim is a Chris Majewski. Another name from the manifest? He just walked up and shot the man. Two of them officers, they went that way. Go on, get after him. Jack was a company sergeant. He would never get involved in something like this. We brace him and drag him downtown. Won't work. He's a tough customer. Can't hit a target that isn't there, fellas. I can't take the shot from here, Cole. Hit him, Cole. Spin him out. Keep it steady, and I'll try to bust his tires. Good, we need to get closer. Getting close and scare him off the tar. Step on it, huh? Just give me a little closer. Electric chair.
an LAPD file. We have a traitor in our midst. All of the names on the list have a hit team assigned to them. We need to get to those guys fast, otherwise there'll be no case. We have to look at damage limitation. We can't allow that strumpet Brent Allen to bring down the whole administration. We've got to put a lid on the press. Can't someone talk to Harry over at the Times? It's too late. The Times would look ridiculous if we dropped the story now. Who is this Stoker? Stoker's a lily white. Nothing that will fix this in the short term. My law and order credentials are disappearing as we speak. Can we get Brenda to leave town? Yes, we can, but she won't go quietly. Brenda has extensive records. Can she at least lay low? That's already been taken care of. Mayor? District Attorney? Who is this guy? And what does he want, Horrell? The name's Roy Earl, detective, administrative vice. Aren't you one of the clowns that got us into this mess? Oh, I think that the orders regarding Brenda come down, not up, Mayor. I have a human interest story. It involves a certain LAPD cop, a hero from the war, who has let his beautiful wife and kids down, who has betrayed America for a German junkie whore who has abandoned his pledge to the LAPD and his commitment to the public, we all serve. Could be all over the papers by tomorrow, and you would be off the hook. So what do you want in return, Roy? Fingering a fellow officer. Owen is meeting with Sheldon tonight. Steer him off the tar. I can't hit a target that isn't there, fellas. I'll try for the tires. Keep your foot down.
tell Courtney. Bad, bad luck. <coughs> it was worth a try. It was worth a try. <sighs> People never get the chance to be rich. Wouldn't you risk it? Sheldon is bringing his own fire team with him. Juicy, Beckett, Goldrick, Driscoll, these are good guys. What do you think you're wrapped up in this thing? Not everyone has your unwavering restraint in the face of temptation, Cole. APB on every one of the sons of bitches on that. APB on the car 11 K, car 11 King, come in. Car 11 King. 11 K, go to Hollywood Station. A hey, Courtney Sheldon is at Hollywood Station requesting an interview with Detective Cole Phelps. Well, I'll be damned. That's not correct protocol, 11 K. I'll take that as a Roger. Car 11 King en route. Roy. In my office, if you please. I'm working a major case. I'm not close, Cap. It's gonna have to wait. Let Phelps do the interrogation. But, Cap, no buts. This is more important. You're the reason brothers and sisters should marry. Hey, I gave his wife a tap. I said all's fair in love and war. Sheldon, is this your attorney? No, detective. This is Dr. Harlan Fontaine. He came down here to help me out. How do you do, sir? You stole the morphine from the Cool Ridge. You can't prove that. Let's see if I can try. And what is your relationship to Sheldon, sir? Tudor mentor. Mr. Sheldon is a medical student of mine. He has a very bright future. Oh, that's nice to know. Too bad all of your war buddies won't get to see your graduation. I would have asked Beckett or Majewski or Driscoll about their involvement, but that's difficult, considering they're all dead. That leaves you, Sheldon. You can't blame their deaths on me, Phelps. You're lying, Courtney. The other guys aren't smart enough to attempt something like this. You either give it up, or I go after Jack for it. And how do you prove that, Cole? 
How long is this going to take? We know about your showdown with Cohen. We found notes on your guys. Cohen is hitting our old deal. He believes we have the morphine. I told him that we don't have it. And that's the truth. Isn't it, Doc? I believe, Mr. Sheldon. I think he's telling the truth, Detective. You were on the ship, Sheldon. Yes, that's correct. So you had opportunity. But it doesn't mean that I was involved. Can you me the so you don't mind that the mob executed McGoldrick, Driscoll, and Beckett to get to you? I don't know why you're trying to pin this on me. Where's your proof? Beckett had a message for you before he died. Bad luck. It was worth a try. I feel bad about Beckett, Phelps. He was a hard charger. Those guys deserve more. I don't blame them for taking their shot. Have you finished, detective? I'm just getting started. You have an answer for everything, Courtney. Let's hope Jack does, because now I'm going after him. Is there anyone you're not prepared to sacrifice? Jack is not in this. He's a good guy. You were Jack, Courtney. I don't care who goes to jail. I just want the morphine off the street. What are you offering, Cole? Don't be ridiculous, son. This man is gambling. What's your offer? Doctor, good to see you. I'm conducting an investigation. Upstairs in my office, now. This man is about to confess. As of now, you're suspended from duty, pending a fitness review. What are you talking about? You heard the man, Phelps. Upstairs and face the music like the hero you wear. You certainly had us fooled, Detective. Phelps, you're one of my favorite sons. You've broken this old man's heart. Sir, what is going on here? You're suspended, Phelps. And over your badge and gun. Don't keep him waiting. What is going on here? Your wife's attorney has pictures of you and the German. Compromising pictures, Lad. She's pressing charges. You'll be formally charged with adultery. A criminal cannot serve as an LAPD officer, as I'm sure you're aware. I don't understand. How could you do it, Lad? Your wife, your children, consorting with the enemy and a dope fiend at that. You're lucky the war is over. You'd be taken out and shot. The department doesn't need this kind of publicity, Phelps. Hand over the gun. Keep your head down until your board hearing. I forbid you to make any comments to the press. What the hell were you thinking? Listen, Marie, I need to explain. Please leave. You're upsetting the girls. Let me see them, Marie. They're my daughters. Go to her, Cole. You have done enough damage here. Do you want me to call the police? For God's sake, Marie. Can't we at least talk? What is there to talk about? Do you love her? Do you? What were you thinking? What about our children? Can you imagine? what this has been like for them. Go away, Cole. My father has hired an attorney and you will be hearing from him. I'd like to explain, Marie. I'd like to tell you what I've been going through. What you've been going through. I have had reporters camped out on the front lawn all morning. I can't stand it, Cole. 